Last winter, we had to use a 100 gallon water tank in the bathroom to have water. Why? Because the underside of the house was not underpinned or insulated. Now it is. So this is our remedy on how to keep the water under the house from freezing. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. So the temperature you just saw is what it is outside and in the house. It's currently 17.1 outside and 66.3 inside. That is the current temperature under the house. Why am I concerned about that? Well, let me show you. Now, even though it is insulated, there's still that risk of freezing. Down here is our water storage. As you can see, we have two 210 gallon tanks down underneath the house, all plumbed in to go to our water system. This is what we use for bathing, dishes, cleaning, things like that. Not what we use for drinking. So, we need to keep that from freezing. We're going to work on that today. We're going to cover it up with that for right now, so we can cut out a piece of foam to stick in there and put a fan in there. That access hole is so we can fill the tanks in the winter time. Sir, if you would, hand me that fan. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Get this cut out. All right, we're back. Did not work the way I wanted it to, but we got this. So that's how it's going to sit like that. And once I have the fan in place, I will put insulation tape around it all to kind of hold it. The one thing I have to check first, I need to make sure I can get the couch over this. Otherwise, I've got to go down further. Sir, if you would, um, the couch is going to have to come forward a little bit from now on. Okay. Okay, slide to me. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, we're good. Back. All right. All right, so we're going to get this, uh, cover the hole back up, and we're going to get the fan inside. Inside the foam, that is. So I was talking to one friend up here in Alaska, and he had a system similar to this. And then I started talking with my buddy John down in Florida, and this is a system we came up with. It uses a power supply pack for a computer going through a touchscreen board and then going to fans, and it's working perfectly. Between a few friends and myself, I think we can come up about anything to fix about any problem that occurs up here. So John is a computer guy. He had this computer power board or power breaker, whatever you want to call it, I'm not a computer tech guy, especially when it comes to PCs. I'm a Mac guy. So I just plugged it into the wall. Goes into this board here, and there's an on off switch. And it feeds all through this rat's nest here, and then goes into a board over here that has a screen. And I'm going to plug this wire here into the fan, and we'll show you what's going to happen. So. Just kidding. All right, so now we're gonna come back over here and go click. And then, this is a touch board. You can see, it's spinning already. Ooh. Currently, it's upside down. <laughs> Currently, it's spinning at 700 RPM. So I'm going to drop it down to the minimum, which I think is 500 RPM. And of course, I got fat fingers, so it's hard for me to get into these kinds of things. And ignore all the foam all over the place. That was Zeus, I swear. All right, so now, ooh, look at the glare. I have it down to 500 RPM. 
blowing into there. So I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit and give it a little bit of time and we'll do a recording of what it's doing under the house. Currently it is 43.3 and it is about 1140 in the morning. So we're going to check that back. We'll see what happens with it and see if we can get it to warm up down there and see how quickly it gets warm. The fire is going. It's on a slow burn. It's set on number two. And uh, that's where I had it last night, overnight, and we still had wood in the morning, still burning. So we'll be back here in a little bit. Let me clean up here for Sarah kills me. And like I always say, I'm in fear for my life. Bye. All right, so I didn't like the way the foam was fitting, so I decided to go with another piece of plywood. I did not bring you guys along and didn't want to bore you with me cutting wood. So we're gonna put it back together now. I gotta take it off the foam and get it in here. So bear with me here. The main issue of using the foam was it was letting too much air come in. And I cannot seal that totally tight with tape due to the fact that I need to be able to get access to that to put water into the cisterns during the winter time. So I want it to run how it's gonna run yeah. for the testing period. And right there is perfect. I don't want it to come too far because I'd rather have, this is taller, yes. so I'd rather have the air going underneath this. Exactly. All right, so that's in there. It's okay. over it. Let me show you guys. So the fan is underneath there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how this goes. I can feel the air being pulled in, so okay. we'll let you know how this goes. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye. We're sitting at 46.6, and it's been one hour since we put it back on, so we've gained a little bit. Be back soon. It's been a couple hours. We're sitting pretty at 7.7. Seven. So if it stays like that, I'm happy. Check again back a little bit. So we made a little bit of changes right here. We are leaving a gap that's about five to six inches across right here. And I upped the speed on the fan to about 900 uh, rotations per minute. So we're finding that it keeps the underside of the house down where the water tanks are right around 57 to 58 degrees, no matter what the outside temperature is, as long as we have the wood stove going it keeps it warmed. I think what's happened now is we've actually created like a thermal battery under there. So the ground's warm, the tanks are warm, so it does not lose the heat as quickly as it used to. Right now it's right around 58 degrees and it is currently 32 degrees outside. And it was snowing, but now it's not. Um, I've got to go out and do our snowfall measurement of the micro dusting we got. But I wanted to give you guys an update on how it's going and it is working very well. We're tickled pink and we're gonna leave it installed and let it keep running. Talk to you guys later. Well, that's it for this week, guys. I'm glad you stopped by and checked out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now this cute little baby alligator was taken down in the Yucca Pens back in Punta Gorda, Florida. He's probably about six inches long and he was chasing my fishing bobber when I was looking to get some fish. Now don't forget, we have our lives every Monday night starting at 4 o'clock and we go to approximately 545 when we're followed by Adam and Phyllis at Alaska Cut the Cord. So make sure if you stop by to check guys out, you hang around and check them out as well. They got a lot of cool stuff going on over at their place. I also wanted to say thank you yet again. Y'all have helped us reach 500 subs in very short order. We're very appreciative of everybody out there that has subscribed to the channel and that has viewed the channel that's not subscribed. Well, that's it. We hope to see you on the next one. Y'all have a great day and take care.